Happy Wednesday, everyone, and Happy New Year. We are. If, if those on our end from ASWARE can please mute their microphone, that will help. I'm hearing some feedback. Thank you. Everyone, we're so glad you're with us. And by us, I mean Chuck and Matthew, Jason and Stein and Cheryl and me. You've got a, a big part of our ASWARE team with you today. We hope the new year is treating you well and you and yours remain healthy. On the slide, you are seeing that uh, the current versions of, of the software, 95 in Student Manager is the most current version that was released just this week on Monday. And Matthew will always also share what was released since our last new features webinar, which was in October. And AceWeb 62 is in testing and will release as soon as it's ready. And Jason may have some comments on that in just a bit. As I get ready to turn things over to Matthew, I want to sh uh, remind you to join us next Thursday morning for our user webinar on escrow best practices. Lindsay will walk through student manager practices, and Jason will lead the discussion about ACEWEB. So whether you currently use it or use the escrow or are considering it or want to know more about it, you'll appreciate that webinar. So Matthew, you should have controls here shortly. And as I turn that over to him, I remind you all to send some questions and your comments in the chat. Chuck and I are watching that. Matthew, we're seeing your screen, and so I'm going to turn things over to you. Great. Thank you, Sharon. Um, uh, I, w I will want to say, though, the uh, 95 build on Monday, uh, at least the first release of it, did have a critical issue in the cloning. Um, uh, we did find that later in that same day. So if you are updating, make sure you get the 0 0.095.1 release uh, to, to make sure you don't run into that cloning error. Um, so yeah, uh, it's a little note there. Uh, come on. There we go. Okay, first thing I wanted to talk about was email relaying. Uh, we have done some updates, and I did share this in the newsletter, but uh, Microsoft is shutting down basic authentication. Uh, that was supposed to happen uh, this October, but due to COVID, they've pushed it off um, sometime next year. I don't think they've, they've come up with a finalized date. I think they were going to try for um, October of, of 2021, but um, I, I I don't think that's even going to happen. So, um, but anyway, basic authentication is going away. Uh, what that means for you guys is the relay settings inside Student Manager should be fine for now until either your institution turns off basic authentication or they update their email server and they don't enable basic authentication into the new server. Now, what that, what I'm implying is that Microsoft by default right now does not enable basic authentication by default. And that's to get ready for uh, the, the uh, basic authentication to get ripped out uh, whenever that happens. Uh, either this fall or, or I'm suspecting 2022 is when it'll actually happen. But um, so anyway, there your your institution may already be taking proactive steps in this direction. So we here at student at, at Aceware we're being a little bit more proactive with this as well, uh, just in case your institution is wanting to switch sooner than later. Uh, so we've uh, we've got it. Uh, the, we're, the solution we're using is from MailKit, uh, and it is using modern authentication. And this does require a new set of DLLs. So just ask your technician for those DLLs, and they'll be able to provide those to you uh, once you are ready to to make the switch over. 
um, all the other settings in your institution, you know, if if you've changed email servers, your institution may require different uh, settings. So just change your settings like you normally would, and and um, things should work. Uh, we've been able to test this um, a little bit here, but um, yeah, we're re we're relying on this mail kit to do the majority of the work for us. So. Um, also, another note is Ace Web. We have not gotten this uh, done in Ace Web yet. Um, we're kind of letting Student Manager be the guinea pig a little bit with this, but um, um, it it should be fairly straightforward to get ready in Ace Web down the road uh, once we're ready to pull the trigger there. So uh, we should be we should be ready to rock when when uh, Microsoft does pull the plug on this. Uh, next thing I wanted to cover is there have been um, some significant changes to refunding even prior to um, uh, a few months ago. This is actually in 93 we've been doing some more changes and I think again in 94 uh, and I'll walk through some specifics here in, in a second but um, uh, what we were seeing was invoices that were tied to payments and you do a refund we were just voiding it just to just to make sure that that um, you weren't getting an unbalanced invoice still in the system um, there were for reporting issues you, some people were were concerned about that so we've re looked at this at the situation and what we have done is um, kind of divided it up um, so the refund um, we, we're making sure that the refund gets the paid to invoice number um, prior it was just being removed with with the invoice being removed um, so then we're also reinvigorating basically the invoice uh, so voiding the original making a new one in the the uh, correct amount and and that paid to invoice number then matches with something in the system and it balances that's the important part we are making sure invoices balance at the end of doing a refund that's that's the big takeaway here i've i should have just said that and not had this whole slide of information so um, the new system balances invoices when you do a refund uh, another change that was put into place is before you finish doing the refund, there is a pop-up screen titled, Is This Correct? and walks you through all the different things. I've kind of, I've put in all the options here on my test one here for, for uh, uh, you know, demonstration purposes, but, you know, it's telling me refunding blah, blah, blah person in whatever course. Uh, it shows the course number and the course name, the amount, and you know which of the choices: total amount, partial amount. You know which choice did you choose there uh, to get that amount, and then uh, if this was canceled um, the, or there's a fee adjustment, it tells you what fee adjustment was selected. Uh, that and then confirming that the registration is canceled our CEUs credits cleared out if you've chosen that choice and attendance cleared out if you've cho chosen that. So you have an opportunity to hear, oh, I didn't mean to clear out attendance for this. I still am going to need it because this person may come back or something. I don't know, whatever you need to do. Or maybe you still, you know, this is the middle of the term and you'll need to still report out attendance um, on this person, um, you know, for different reporting, whatever, whatever you need to do, you can say no at this point. Go back, make the the change in your choices, and hit process again, and then it'll come up with this pop up and let you cancel out again if you need to. But uh, so anyway, it's a one last chance. Make sure everything is correct before processing. Uh, one other change with Refund Wizard is refunding escrow payments. Um, 
we were finding in some of our testing is that the um, uh, cancel choice, the zeroing out, the hours, CEUs, credits, and then the remove attendance option, they were still live. So, and in an escrow, those don't matter. Um, so yeah, we've we've taken those, we've grayed those choices out because they don't matter on an escrow registration. Uh, some changes in the receipt cursor. Uh, biggest thing is we've added more location fields, loc address, city, state, zip, and the two UDF fields. Um, this does apply to mass receipt, print receipt, email receipt. Um, also, when I was fiddling around in there, I noticed that email receipt uh, was missing locat, well, basically all the location fields, so it, it didn't have any of them. Um, so I added a few, the loc info and loc uh, print in, which is the um, logical um, um, show location field. So that that stuff's now available to you uh, by default in in those areas. So a little bit more help to you. Uh, another th or, uh, one thing with uh, the send roster to instructor from the course quick reports is somebody asked for the ability to, to send the student manager uh, ID uh, with that, which hopefully you guys are all using fake ones and not actually using the uh, using SSN in that field. Uh, but anyway, uh, you can now send that to instructors, um, and that way instructors can then reference them, the students specifically by IDs, and another way for, for them to look things up. Especially helpful with uh, if your instructors are doing attendance um, and things like that, where, where you know having another identifier for student, especially when you got two John Smiths or to Sam Malone's in your course or something, you know, being able to distinguish between them uh, is always a good thing. So, uh, student list from the course screen, um, the new field being added is cell phone. Uh, in my case, well, it, in, in every, every case, it's added clear to the right, but don't forget, you can reorder the, these uh, fields, so if you want the cell phone next to the home phone or even before day phone, uh, just move that where you need it to be and then it'll remember each time you bring up the student list where, wherever you've put your, your, the cell phone field. Um, uh, but yeah, anyway, it's there for you to, to get to and, and be able to see uh, cell phones since that seems to be um, more reliable way to contact people uh, more and more. Uh, num weeks is a new function being added, and it's it's um, you pass it two dates, and it calculates then how many weeks are between those two dates. Um, oh, sorry, I left a couple of question marks in here. Um, um, yeah, ignore those. It, it calculates between the two dates. If the begin date and the end date are in the same week, that is one week. Um, and you can, it, it, you can't get a negative between two dates. So, so, um, yeah, those are, those are questions that I had posed the other technicians as I, um, previously brought up this this function so anyway that's uh that's been in there now if, uh i think that went in in 93 um which would have been the november build um if i remember correctly but uh, anyway look it up in the help guide cheryl has done a tremendous job making sure the help guide's been updated uh especially with new stuff uh, and this next one is a big item it actually was one of those things we thought about waiting until conference to roll out but i was like eh let's get it done sooner than later and that's being able to do catalog import 
with your course import. So in your Excel spreadsheet, you can put in your course description, your, your um, um, you know, all the catalog information you would normally put in there, and that will import as well as courses. Um, so you don't have to do a separate, actually the catalog, the catalog import in Student Manager is a DBF format. So this is now the only way you can get an Excel spreadsheet with catalog information into Student Manager, and that's right when you import new courses and stuff. And just specifying a catalog code in the course import will tie to your old catalog codes just fine, just, just like always, um, so you can continue to use that. Uh, next thing, multiple invoice payment. So what I've done is added a print receipt after you make a payment. So let's see this. Come on, where's my student manager? Come here. Okay. So what I'm talking about, and this is a relatively new item. Um, I think we rolled it out conference last year. Pay multiple outstanding. Um, oh, I don't, where's, ah, let me get out of here. I don't have multiple. Let me get a, another invoice in here real quick. I'll bring up George Bush, add a new registration, payment and billing and save. Oh, and I need an invoice number. Um, oh, that's probably what I need to do is just run invoices, but um, yeah, get an invoice number. Okay, so now I should have two invoices, module, invoices, pay multiple outstanding. So there's my George Bush now with uh, an Aceware Systems invoice. So if I checkmark both of them, say done, and um, payment type check, blah, 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 check. Aceware Systems is picking up the tab for George Bush. Uh, how nice of them. Notice the paid to invoice number is multiple. Usually on the invoice, when you're doing a single, you've got the print to invoice down here. In in the case of a multiple, you, you can't do that. So I'm going to save this payment. So it, here's what it's done. It's paid off um, these five registrations tells me how many or how much it was for each one. And so now if I say, okay, close, it asks me, do I want to print a receipt? Yes. So then it gets me right into the registration receipt area, uh, just like you would go through with the invoices. Um, so I'm just going to do a default here. Uh, conventional yeah if I wanted to do an email from here I could do that yeah it does all that but I'm just going to do conventional receipt uh, so it shows oh and my printer's funky on my laptop so that's why it's chopping off the right side of the page but anyway you got the receipt here for Carol Anderson another one for Carol George W Bush um, Matthew me me okay so all those payments then were in the receipts. So should make you guys' life a lot easier, especially being able to email receipts from there, um, which, yeah, you guys don't need to see that. So um, yeah, same as what you do before with emailing receipts. Next item I've got is the date and user is now both being dropped into the uh, Y canceled field uh, for you to to be able to keep track of who I think previously it was only doing the date uh, at the beginning of the message and it was only doing the date if you canceled the course from the course screen if you went through the menu cancel course it uh, it didn't even put in a date into the the why cancel message so uh, it's now the same in both areas and it's adding in the user uh, when you're doing the create fee and the new fee expiration, 
if you've got your pre your preference to do date um, date format on your fee expirations, then it will ask for the date format in here in the, uh, when you're mass creating um, uh, fees from here. So that way you're consistently putting things in uh, across the board. So uh, course credits change. So this is if you go into a course. Uh, it used to be, you know, you change the hours, you change the CEUs, it would ask you if you would want to change all the registrations with that. If you change the credits, it wouldn't ask you. So this is uh, to be consistent with the other two, uh, more than anything else, it's now asking when you change the credits on a course, do you want to change all the registrations with that credits? Uh, and that's when you save the course. So you can do the changes of all three, and then it should ask for three times then, do you want to change hours across the board, CUs across the board, credits across the board? So be wary of that. Uh, another thing was with the um, AW pending report on startup, uh, we've put in a the ability to change the sort order. And I think there's three choices. Let me look at student manager. Um, da, 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 da. That's on the pay tab. Sort order. Uh, I think by default, right now, last name order is, is what you get. Well, if you're wanting to see only, if you want to see the latest ones on top, do reverse date, and that will show then the AW pending, the latest AW pendings at the top. If you want um, them at the bottom, you know the latest at the bottom, so you got the oldest up at the top. Um, then then select date. Uh, so up to you which way. I think reverse date would be the the better option, but that's just my opinion. And you've got three choices there, so do whatever you feel you need to do. And that's a user by user preference. So if you disagree with your office mate on how to do AW pendings, then you guys disagree. I mean, <laughs> you could have your both set uh, to different uh, settings there. Uh, the catch all is getting bigger. Uh, with the latest things being added was orphan UDFs. Um, which amazingly was like, okay, isn't that part of the reason why we had the uh, UDF cleanup tool in, to begin with? Um, but um, but yeah, that was um, really duplicate UDFs and um, adding UDFs if they were missing, that was the main thing being done with the UDF tool. We just weren't looking for orphans. What I mean by an orphan is like your name UDF is there in the system, but there is no name record attached to that UDF. So it's like it's taking up extra space. It's it doesn't belong to anybody anymore. So don't know what happened to it. Uh, it might have been one of those things where it. Um, uh, you merged records or something, and it deleted, but then somehow it became undeleted, um, things like that. Um, a lot of these um, things are, we have the tools to correct the issue because we never figured out what causes the issue to begin with. Or maybe we've caught what causes it, but um, um, yeah, we're wanting to make sure we clean up the old ones out of the system too. So. Uh, this is one of those, we're not sure why you get orphan UDFs from time to time. And in my demo run, I had a few. So um, yeah, we'll be looking to figure out why that happens. But um, for now, run the tool. When you run the tool from time to time, uh, these are now getting cleaned up and saving you space. Uh, combined workshops, it went, when I say combine, it's it's really when you change the code of one workshop to be the same code as another one, it really it it did the job of 
changing all the registrations to the new code, but then it left that extra workshop in the system. So you had uh, duplicates is is what was happening. So this is kind of a bug, but at the same time we're we're cleaning things up too and and um, making it even better. So not only are we we've added or corrected it to where when it does combine like that it gets rid of the evil twin but uh also we give you a message now that says hey these are merging the two codes together um and also you know the message i think that is there now is is just it's just saying that it's changing the code so it doesn't really give you a um a sense of what it's actually doing but um but now anyway cleaned up the message to be better and help you out and and the system doesn't doesn't break things similarly with locations um now with locations though the combine actually worked but the message just indicated that the the codes were merging but um um, or just it, it would say that the link was changing it didn't really say that it was merging so I, I think this would be the case of like you've got uh, location A and location B you can no longer use location B you want to get all future courses and all basically all past courses so that when you clone um, in the other location that way you're you're getting everything in the new location that you can use and not the location you can't use um, so this this kind of this allows you to merge and it does um, I've cleaned up the message so it tells you that that's what it's doing um, and and it, it isn't a behavior change it really is in this case a message change of, of what it's doing all right, email link to pay outstanding. This, um, we rolled this out not too long ago. Oh, I think conference and, or maybe right after conference. But anyway, um, it was a button on the student manager screen and I just put together, you know, what the language of the email would say. We've now tied it to a template if I can get over to student manager. So you can now do what you you want it to say. Uh, and this includes the the subject of the email. Uh, you can customize or by default I'm putting it as link to pay your outstanding balance. Um, so maybe you want to put your institution in there somewhere or maybe you want to clarify that some other way. But anyway you have the ability then to edit the header and the footer of this me message the link that populates in the middle uh you can't change that code i'm i'm i've and that's why i've put the asterisk link to pay outstanding populates here just to let you know you can do whatever you want in this box it does not matter that link is going to get put in this area no matter what you do. So just ignore the body in this email template. You can do whatever you want in the, the header and the footer. Um, and, and I've already put, I've put HTML code in here for you so you can use that and uh, be able to expand your message. Um, you have a balance with us. You know, I, you know, I made it fairly simple. The, the default, this is pretty much matches what we were sending um, prior to making this template so uh, yeah just uh, do whatever changes you need to me to make to it and from here on it will email this and I guess I should show everybody does know where this at is at right email link to pay outstanding is right there Jenny call doesn't have an outstanding balance so that link is dead uh bill clinton he does and that's nothing against his politics or anything but uh bill clinton does have a balance of 195 dollars you can email him and and get uh 
get paid for it. So, okay. Ah, that was quite a bit. Three uh, three months worth of stuff. That's uh, uh, quite a bit to go f through. Uh, so the update is up available. Uh, as Sharon said, it has been available since Monday. And I apologize for, for having to put up uh, uh, the second um, um, update. But uh, hey, we didn't want long-term that uh, cloning issue to, to get out there and make things you know worse for your data than than what was already happening so any questions well thank you matthew i'm not seeing questions right now but sometimes those come up after you start to use the feature so you know where to reach us if you have questions about these changes jason i'm going to um, be passing things off to you and as I do that, I'll remind you that, that this session is being recorded. So if you feel like you need to go back for a review or share with your colleagues, that will be available in our webinar archives. And you'll also receive a link tomorrow. So if you just want to go from that link, that's fine too. So thank you, Matthew, for all of those great changes. And as I said, send us questions if you have, if they come up as you use these features. Jason, tell us what's new in AceWeb at, that's being tested at this moment. Sounds good. Thank you, Sharon. So as mentioned, we're going to talk about what we've been working on in Build 62 for AceWeb. Um, we've been keeping Stein very busy, as always, and uh, we do have him and Cheryl on the line to keep me honest here as we talk about what we've been working on. So a quick glance at uh, the new things that went in are some enhancements to the new Cancel Reg features. We're going to talk a little bit about that a new contact us form that Cheryl put together that's uh, really handy. And then we've got some new uh, alternate dialogue configuration options for those pop-up messages when uh, you're working on either through proxy registration or through the sign up page. We're going to look at some of those. And then one of our big new features that we're excited about is the multi-proxy selections. We'll, we'll do some examples and show you that here at the end. And then also talk about editable instructor profiles. All right, so first up, cancel reg. So what is cancel reg? This is something that was kind of snuck in back in 61. Um, we've recently made this available to SQL as well, uh, but it essentially gives your students the ability to cancel registrations on AceWeb from their history page. Now you might be thinking that's a crazy idea, there's money involved and yada, 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 and that is, uh, definitely the truth. And so we give you a number of different options where you can choose to only be able to cancel free courses or just free and waitlisted courses. Or if you are really confident in your users or your the way your system works or courses are set up and you want to have students have the ability to cancel courses with fees, then we do allow that. Now we've also expanded this to work with staff. So through Manager Web, your staff members can actually go in to view a student's history page and cancel those courses as well. Now, staff will obviously not have the same restrictions that your students will. So if you have it filtered to just show um, free courses or waitlisted in free courses, your staff members will have free reign of that. So a couple of uh, screens to give you an example of what you'd be looking at. Um, this one in the bottom right is the, the basic current courses from your history page. So you go to your profile, click on My History, and then click on Current Courses. There is a Cancel Registration button down in the bottom left. That is going to take you to the screen that you see up in the top left there, which presents you with whichever eligible courses that you that student has to, to cancel. Um, let me do a quick example here. If we See this, I'm logged on here. So I'm going to log in, and I'm on my account page, so I'm going to go to History. And then again, just looking at the current courses. So you can see here, I've got a number of courses. A couple of these are free, and then we've also got a paid course. So if I click this Cancel Registration button, it takes me to the page, and based on the settings that you have, and most of the settings for this, I do want to mention, are on the actual cancelreg.awp template. So you can configure 
um, a whole bunch of different things such as the waitlisted free or all courses. You can specify the number of uh, lag days, if you will, so that um, how many days prior to the beginning of that course that people can actually cancel out of it. Uh, but you can see mine is configured for just free courses. So all we're seeing is the, the two free courses there. You cancel that and it's gonna go through the, the process of canceling it. Um, also on the cancel reg template, you have the ability to configure the notifications. So um, let me go back to, um, it's not what I wanted to do. Let's do this. Okay, so you can configure the, the notification that goes to whoever's in your office email setting on that cancel reg template. Um, but like I say, there's a, a number of different configuration options that you have because a lot of you are going to not want to allow this for um, non-free courses for sure. Uh, that being said, if, if you do open this up to courses with fees, you just need to make sure that your registrants or your students know that the refunds have to be handled uh, manually by staff. There's no, there's no sort of refunding or anything like that that's going to take place. It's simply just canceling them out of that registration, and then you've got to do that um, money exchange on the back end. Okay, next up is this new Contact Us form. So uh, Cheryl put this together, and it's basically a way that your students from your web page can either shoot you a question or make a comment about something. And the nice thing about it is it's not using their email client. So yeah, we've always had a way, like with the, the help email links, um, when a page comes up or if there's a, an error or something goes wrong, there's a link that they can click that essentially opens their email client and opens a, a new email message so that they can contact your organization and figure out whatever's going on. This one is actually run through the browser. So this uses AceWeb's emailing system to be able to send that message. Uh, so this is gonna work great for, for mobile users. Um, typically on your phone, you know, you don't have an actual email client. Um, you may be able to check email with Gmail, things like that, but this is gonna allow them to just send that right from the, the web page. Um, it's completely customizable, so you can include whichever fields you like, uh, and it also does support Google's reCAPTCHA. So you're probably, uh, if you're on the fence about having another form on your page, if you're already getting spam accounts and things like that, uh, Google reCAPTCHA will definitely help mitigate that. Um, if you are interested in this form, just get with your tech, and we can get you the files to download and get that set up. Okay. The new, new sign up alternate dialogue options. In 61, we put in the ability with proxy registration to really customize the messages that pop up when people are entering either an email address that already exists or a new email address, just because there's a lot of different ways that you guys are using the proxy system to have parents register kids or people in workforce development registering employees. There's a whole bunch of different configurations that this can be used in. And so we wanna give you the, the best ability to be able to set your verbiage up to make that a very clear, concise process for the people doing the registrations. Um, that was such a big hit and we had some requests to also apply this to the signup page. So on your person.awp template, we now have text files that you can edit that will allow you to configure those verbiage options there as well. So people you know, signing up for a new account, um, those are the, the big ones where duplicate accounts often come into play. So them having a, you know, a very clear plan, um, if you've got those people that, that really just can't figure the system out and it's too much, hopefully this is gonna help them find their way. So uh, very excited about that. Again, this is going to take a, a new person.awp template and has some extra files. That is one that you probably don't want to just overwrite because it's probably the most customized template that we have. This is where you choose, you know, what fields are going to be enabled when a person creates an account. So before you go and just grab that whole person.zip file, get with your tech and make sure that you can customize the, the new one to include the fields that you already have on your existing template. Okay, next up is the multi-proxy selection. So this is a feature that is 
going to allow the person doing the proxy registration to select multiple people that they've either registered in the past or that are on their um, their family membership or family group. Um, select all those people at one time, add them all to the cart, um, and then assess the same fees if they want to. So if you've got people that are kind of fed up, you know, I just got to re register each of my 17 kids individually, uh, this is going to work out great for them. Now, it does have some drawbacks. Um, it doesn't support data capture. So if you're registering a whole bunch of kids in a course and that course happens to have you know, a data capture template that says, okay, what's the t-shirt size? There isn't a way that we can include all that on that same enrollment cart form. So keep that in mind when you're doing this. The other thing is you can't individually select different fees for all the registrations. Now you can select the same fee. So uh, if you're gonna select the same main fee and then maybe some optional fee like purchase calculator or something like that. If you choose that option when you have multiple multiple people selected, it is going to set those fees for everyone that's being added to the cart. So it does kind of support it, but just keep in mind that it's going to be the same for everyone that's being added. Um, the, the real benefits we see with this are going to be for like your, your kids' camps places, um, things where parents are going to be enrolling children, workforce development where um, you're going to have a, a lot of people being registered at the one time that have all of the same fees and setup. Uh, it doesn't support the traditional custom enrollment card templates. So if you've got a custom enrollment card, it's not going to support that, but we are putting in the ability to have a custom multi-proxy enrollment card template. So if you do want to have that customization still, you'll just need to have that applied to this new template format. All right, finally, we've got editable instructor profiles. So this is a uh, one that's been asked for for quite a while, and it's basically giving your instructors the ability to log on to AceWeb, log into their instructor profile page, and be able to edit some of those fields. Um, I don't have a working example right now, but we do have one on the demo that I can show you. Uh, but real quick, some other things about this you're going to be able to go in and through Manager Web as a staff member and edit those instructor profiles. So we're essentially expanding the Manager Web option to include editing instructor records, which is really cool. Um, you can also set this to send out a notification email to the uh, office email person when a change is made on that. Uh, so if you are kind of wanting to keep an eye on your instructors to uh, make sure that they're not doing anything crazy, that option is available. So if we look at, uh, let's get out of here. All right, close that. Here we go. So if we go to our AceWeb sandbox, Cheryl has a kind of a demo up here that gives you a, a kind of a, a look at what that form looks like. So the instructor logs into their profile and then based so the fields that you choose, whichever ones you have enabled, they can either view those or edit those and um, make those changes to their record. So uh, again, be careful with this. Um, there's things on your instructor profiles that are immediately available on AceWeb. So if you've got instructors that are teaching courses and you add this ability for them to edit their records, they could go in and edit their instructor bio, which is published to AceWeb in real time. So um, if you're worried about, you know, a, a vindictive instructor going and, you know, writing a, a, a sob story about why your, your place sucks because they didn't let you teach this course, then just be careful with that. Make sure you either um, have the notifications enabled or you just disable that field altogether. So. Okay, what next? So bug fixes. Uh, as always, we're, we're always working on finding and eliminating bugs from AceWeb. And once this build is released, which is hopefully going to be within the next couple weeks, we're still working on a, a couple of last minute things. Um, those features and fixes will be posted to the AceWare forum. So if you're not a uh, subscribe member to that, be sure to subscribe. That way you do get that notification when we do post that build. And with that, and with that, thank you, thank uh, you. Questions. I do have questions for both you and for Matthew. Uh, Jason, on the topic of editable instructor bios, we know that means the instructors can do that. And now, can staff do that through Manager Web? 
yes, most definitely. Most definitely. Um, the staff can look up the instructor record and uh, edit those profiles the, the same way that if the instructor were logging in themselves. Okay. And folks, if you think of other questions, go ahead and drop them in there. Matthew, I have a, a several part question for you, and this is on the topic of the email link, email link to pay. The first question is, will you see the email and have a chance to preview it before it's sent? Uh, if I remember right, no. No. Okay, so a wish list item here from Amy. Yes. <laughs> okay. Yeah, very good. Thank you. Wish list item. Yep, but yep. Okay. Double check. Um, what happens if the registration is grouped with multiples? The, the, if the registration you're sending a balance due with is grouped with multiple, is, is a grouped registration. So it's just, it's just it's just it's sending the link into Ace, into Web, Ace Web for them to for view. Them to then, view. Sharon, you yeah we're getting yeah we're getting okay. Um. Anyway, the link goes into Ace Web and it lists the uh, the the outstanding balances there, and I th I'm pretty sure it ignores. You know, if it's grouped with other registrations, um, Jason, correct me if I'm wrong. It's just showing that one student's um, registrations, and then they can select which ones to pay off from there. That's how it should work. Cool. And part three, we are assuming that these pay balance emails that you're sending out are also posted in the CRM and the student contact information, yes? Um, probably not. I, another wish list item. Okay, and Chuck is silent today. He's having some audio problems, but he would like to know, and this goes back to the new features in Student Manager, how many of you are using the course import tool? How many of you are using the course import? Trouble with words today. Raise your hand. I'm looking here. Chuck, you should, are watching too. Not seeing a lot of that. Um, not seeing that. So something for folks to try. I know there's a I few, know there's a few, that few places, just, they places they use it. <laughs> yeah. You're quiet. You're muted, Sharon. Thank you. Applause, applause. I'm seeing applause, applause on the features that you guys have brought up. Lots of thanks on um, the instructor, the ability for the instructor to self-change their bio. And if you love the multi-pick proxy registration, we need to give Rita at OSU a big applause, applause, because that came from her. That was her idea. So thank you, Rita. We do pay attention to all of those wish lists. And Rita, we hope this makes your your life easier here. Oh, there's Tracy. Tracy raised her hand. She's using that course import tool, Chuck. So not seeing any other questions. I want to thank you for being with us, and I have a few follow-up items here for you. Watch for our newsletter on Friday. We are needing your import, um, your input and some feedback on a few things, and we're going to, you know, give you some incentive to do that. So there are some prizes involved. Sign up for next week's webinar. And perhaps you have an extended weekend this weekend. We hope you enjoy it. We have an extended weekend as well. We will enjoy that. And last but not least, please save those dates for virtual conference the week of June 7th through 11th. And watch the newsletter, especially next month, for some information on that. And we will update our events page on aceware.com too. So Rita's doing an applause, applause. She's excited about the multi-proxy you're welcome. I, ca I can't take any credit for that, but those developers, thank you very much for doing that. 
If there are no other questions, we will let you go. We're just a little uh, bit early uh, today. Yep, sign, I hear you. Just, just, just a quick uh, a expansion on the bug list in AceWeb. Uh, most of them are pretty minor, uh, and they will be listed in the forum. But one that might uh, that that a couple of people had encountered with the escrow payment feature that we added recently, uh, paying from escrow on proxy registrations. If you try to use, if you have your escrow funds, you could theoretically use it to to sign up proxies. But there was a bug in the way it was handled. Uh, that's been fixed. And then also, if you had escrow funds that had been refunded, uh, there was a, a bug in that those refunded payments were still showing up on the website. And that, of course, was not good. Uh, if, you, if you've refunded them, you don't want them to still be able to use it. That's also will be fixed in the new release. So if uh, those of you using escrow might want to watch for that. So. Mm, very good, very good. I'm glad you brought that up. Those of you from Mainline will be doing a round of applause on that too. So, very good. Well, if there's nothing else, we will let you get back to your afternoon. Thanks so much for joining us, and we hope to see you next week at our best practices for using escrow. Have a good afternoon, everybody. Bye bye. <laughs>